Hey, it's Dr. Schmidt. So I recently made a video and it's an hour long, so not everybody got to see it. But I want to feature just one section of that video. And this is 20 years of lab work on a low carb diet. This is my results of uh, low carb eating since 1999. I went keto in 2015 and carnivore in 2018. And we'll go uh, year by year here from 2002 to 2022. So you can follow my cursor, total cholesterol never went up above 191. Now there are genetic um, factors here for some people that go low carb and their total cholesterol goes high, but their HDL also goes high. Their, tri their triglycerides drop dramatically. It's called lean mass hyperresponder, and you have to look it up. So if your cholesterol is crazy high in a low carb diet, don't freak out about that. Learn more about lean mass hyperresponder, and you have to educate your doctor because they don't learn this stuff. So, but in my example, 20 years of, and my LDL never went up over 113. It's totally fine. My HDL is averaging mid to maybe a little upper 60s, which is fantastic. The VLDL always needs to be less than 19. And a lot of labs will show it to be normal, even all the way up to 40. You have to ignore that. It's got to be less than 19. And if your lab doesn't run it, knowing that it's the most important lab test of all the lipids. You can uh, figure it out on your own by taking the total cholesterol minus LDL minus HDL. And that's how you get your VLDL. And mine was never over 14. And even 20 years ago, it was nine and eight. The triglycerides, look, never over 68. And some labs say it's okay to be at 150. I think that's way too high. When you go on a low carb diet, the triglycerides drop faster than anything else. They drop the soonest. And then, um, and you know you're on the right track. My glucose, um, I've measured this so many times at home. And my glucose is usually, let's say, uh, 80 or so in the morning. And uh, I've never seen it at my house over 120, after, even after a meal. Uh, certainly like 110, one in the te one teens is fine. And my A1C tested since 2016. It's uh, never been over 5.4. So 5.4 is the cutoff. And I think that if your A1C is 5.7 and higher, that's diabetes. They call it pre-diabetes, but I think it's too high at 5.7. You have to keep it low. So this is uh, really good metabolic health. There is a report that came out recently saying that only 7% of Americans have good metabolic health. And the way that you do this is by eating meat. Okay, and then if you're going to have some vegetables, have a little bit of that. If you're going to have some fruit, have a little bit of that. And um, if you don't eat any junk food, processed food, I've avoided bread pretty well throughout these uh, 23, 4 years. Um, I have it sometimes maybe once a month or less, certainly probably less than that. Uh, I don't buy rice. I don't buy pasta. I don't cook or bake anything with flour. Um, no junk food, no pop. The last time I had a pop was 2003. So a low carb diet. Now, when you go keto, you can go very low carb, maybe even fasting, get into ketosis, and then you come out of it by eating a high carb diet. And you can have like, let's say six sweet potatoes in, in a day for a couple days and you'll come out of ketosis. So you don't have to be super strict. Like I had a very low carb diet, uh, meaning less than 75 grams of carbs a day from 1999 to 2015. I was very strict. If I cheated, I never got above 125 grams of carbohydrates per day. So, but in ketosis, in the ketogenic diet, you eat low carb, and then you can bring yourself out of ketosis by eating a lot of carbs for a short period of time, maybe a day, maybe a week, then you go back into ketosis. So you're going back and forth. I've been saying this since 2015. And there are doctors who say that keto is bad. There's other doctors that say that always burning sugar is bad. I agree with both of them. And that's why you want to cycle in and out of ketosis. Now, being on the carnivore diet since 2018, I have a meat-based diet. And I'm eating 95% of my calories on meat. But then again, still, there's some days where I'll eat a bunch of fruit, maybe some raisins, and, um, and I'm out of ketosis. And I feel better. Then I go into ketosis, and then I feel better. And then they come out of ketosis and they feel better. And I'm using food as medicine. And um, there's times when my muscles feel weak because I need some, uh, some glucose or some fructose, I should say. So I have fruit and then I, I do better in the gym. 
But then if I have too much fruit, my brain doesn't work so well. So I need really good brain power for what I do. So depending on what you do for a living, how your brain needs to function, how your muscles need to function, how your emotions need to be stable, then you um, increase or decrease your carbohydrates, fat, and protein. And that's kind of the big picture of how to work with your diet. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed. This is 20 years of, uh, of, of, of lipids and glucose of a low-carb diet.